What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 40 of On Shape. This is technically version 2 of the video. I found there's a couple things in the first video, so if you watched that already, I'm sorry. I went and delete took that down. Just because there's a couple things, I'd rather talk through more in depth uh, with this video and not to prevent some confusion. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, upload some drawing files. And in the description of this video, you'll also find a link to download those drawing files as well. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and then click import. And then under, let me find it. There we go. I've got my four drawing files right here. So one for each type of cam we're going to do. And then there's a heart cam as well. Uh, I don't have a drawing file for that one. I'm sorry. I'm just going to kind of make it and you can follow along. Uh, but I am going to do talk about a little bit of difference between the real life version of the cam versus the on shape version. And what we run into a little bit of problem is, is that there's some limitations with on shape as far as constraining a cam and getting those mates to work uh, in real life versus on on shape. So some of these cams I'm going to have to make kind of almost three versions. One of some of these cams work kind of as is. And so we're just going to kind of take it step by step and follow through. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the eccentric cam and then we're going to make the pair cam and then we're going to follow up with the hex, the snail, and then the heart shaped cams. So I'm going to go ahead and upload these four right here. The reason I did four different ones is because we want to have that as isolated as much as possible. We really don't want to have to worry about uh, all the other cams being in my face uh, as I'm making one particular one. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go on the plus sign here. And I'm actually going to create a new part studio which truly doesn't make this a top-down anymore, but uh, I found out with students using Chromebooks, if you try to do too much in one file or one part of your design, it can have a hard time rendering, and you're just spending you know, a whole lot of time just waiting for that wheel to finish uploading. So we're just going to make these cams one at a time on a separate part studio. So I'm going to go ahead and make my uh, top and front planes uh, inactive. That way, when I'm making this, this cam is already lined up in the direction I want it to be. So we're going to click on Sketch. And let's go ahead and upload or insert our first image. So that's going to be this eccentric cam right here. Now, what I'm going to do is actually make another cam on top of that. And that is the most useless cam ever. And that would be the circle cam. So what we got here is we got the insert diameter. Our axle is going to be 3 16 of an inch. And then our ax outside diameter is going to be, you notice that in our drawing file, it's labeled as D. So what we're going to do then is we're going to create a variable called D and then be able to change that variable when we need it. So I'm actually going to hop out of the sketch real first real quick, and then I'm going to find this variable button right here. The name of this variable is going to be D for diameter. And the value of it, we're going to make it 1.5 inches. And then any time that D, someone pulls up to the top, that way this is referenced for the rest of my sketches, is when I use this variable D, it will put in that value of 1.5 inches. And there we go right there. Now if we actually use this uh, cam, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and extrude this on out you know, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Oh, I think I hit enter key first. Let's try that again. 3 sixteenths. We create a circle cam, which actually is going to produce no motion. Uh, and so that's a little bit of a problem right there. And actually, let's go ahead and keep this here. I'm going to rename this as circle cam. And we're going to reuse this first sketch just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and make this part active. And I'm going to do a sketch view normal 2. And let's make that circle cam inactive. What I'm going to do is actually let's re upload it. Instead of trying to do too many things at once, getting people confused, let's just reinsert that image. So we got my eccentric cam right here. Now let's make this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle, uh, which is going to be my inside diameter for my axle. And that is still going to be uh, 3 16 of an inch. And then we're going to create an offset circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle, make sure it's straight up so we see our dotted lines. 
and there we go. We've got a circle drawn. All we need to do now is dimension it. So the first dimension is going to be the distance between these two circles is 1 fourth, or 0 0.25, times D. So shift 8 on my keyboard. It makes the little star symbol. D, there we go. And then this outside circle is still going to be D. And we see as it creates that eccentric shape for us. We cl click the check mark. Going to extrude this on out to a depth of 3 sixteenths of an inch. Hit the green check mark. And there we go. We now have our first cam. Now, the cool thing about using a centric cam is that I don't need to do anything else when I'm looking at those real life versus the on shape versions used for our assemblies. This one works perfectly fine. And that's because this outside face right here is one continuous face. We don't run into any problems when we're looking at mates as long as the face is continuous. Okay, let's go ahead and rename this part. Let's name this eccentric cam. All right. And oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and make that inactive so then I can use the right plane again. We're going to right click, hit view normal 2, and insert our next one, which is going to be our pair cam. And this was probably our first actual legitimate challenge when designing this. So I'm going to hit C for circle. And I'm going to do the same thing I started with the circle cam. I got my inside diameter, I got my outside diameter, and I'm going to draw another circle straight up right here. Next thing we're going to do is draw two lines that are going to connect this circle to this circle and this circle to this circle. In order to make sure we're constrained, we're actually going to use our tangent constraint right here. And we want this line tangent to this circle, this line tangent to this circle, and so much on the other side as well. There we go. All we need to do now is if we're doing this correctly, we put in our dimensions. But I'm going to go ahead and trim up some of this other geometry on the inside. Actually, I'm not going to need. And we can tell that I still have a shaded profile. So I know that when I extrude this, it's going to take the shape I want. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's dimension. This top one, the radius is going to be 0 0.25 times D. There we go. And let's do this bottom side down here. And that's going to be uh, 0 0.5 times D. There we go. Now something in here doesn't look quite right. And I wonder why it's making this shape. So let's, let's actually delete this one right here. And let's make sure I did this part correct. So it's going to be 0 0.25 times D. That does look all right. Let's give me one quick second. Oh, I did remember. I forgot one other thing. 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then I forgot about the dimension between these two circles. It's going to be 0 0.5 times D. Now, if we do this correctly, it should make kind of an overall pear shape. Um, and we know it's fully constrained because there are no more blue lines. All lines are black which means when I go and change my variable, it should go automatically and adjust here. So let's, let's see that in action. Let's go and extrude this one out, a distance of 3 sixteenths of an inch. All right, and let's now change this variable to 2.5 inches. What is that gonna do for me? We see my pair cam actually grew in size or it was scaled to a different dimension. That inside axle doesn't change and what I've just tested, and this is kind of where I had to do the second version of this, is that this should work on on shape. It does a pretty decent job with these, uh, I would say these transitions between this face and this rounded face. What on shape doesn't like is if there is a face that meets at an angle rather than flat. And since we use that tangent constraint, since those faces when they meet each other are flat, it has a nice, easy, smooth transition when you're looking at that animation. 
Um, but that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We've made our circle cam. We've made a pair cam. We've made an eccentric cam. And then after I make the rest of them, I'm going to go ahead and throw them in my assemblies. Uh, and then kind of uh, put them all together in one get-go. Uh, sit tight, folks. I'm going to go ahead and just make the second video as well. I just want to keep these in 10-minute segments. That way, I'm not talking for forever, and you get to go do your stuff. Okay, if these videos have been helpful, please, please, please like and subscribe. It is more awesome than you think. As I watch my numbers grow, I would love to see a 1,000 by the end of the school year. That would just be too much fun. And then uh, if you have any problems or concerns, throw them down in the comment section. If I forgot to uh, upload those download links, feel free to reach out to me and say, Hey, Mr. W, can you throw those down in the comment section? I'd love to help you out. Okay, I think that'll be it, guys. And I'll see you on the next video.